Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by the Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years. Illinois lawmakers are back home after doing something they hadn't done in three years. A new budget, plus pension reform and a full agenda ahead on the cities. A $38.5 billion spending bill gets widespread support from Illinois lawmakers. It makes you wonder what happened this year to break the gridlock that plagued Illinois government for more than three years. Let's ask two people in the know. Joining us is Illinois State Representative Tony McComey, Republican from Savannah, and Democratic State Representative Mike Halpin, Democrat from Rock Island. Both of you, nice talking to you as we were saying in June rather than July. Absolutely. What happened this time that made this so successful that even you liked the budget that was approved? Well, it was great thing is collaboration, people actually communicating. I think that was the big thing. Uh, Mike and I have said, you know, everybody always is apologizing how terrible things are in Springfield and mm -hmm. we're, you know, how things were last year. And we're like, well, this is what we know. So it can only get better from here. And it certainly was very different this year. Is it a case that this is an election year and that it pushed people to perhaps compromise more? And You know, maybe in some cases, because I, I believe the people that were leaving the house we're not going to leave without a budget. Mm -hmm. So that that piece, yes. But as for us and our reelection aspect, no, we're gonna have to continue on to do our business regardless. But I think that little added pressure certainly made communications uh, very open. Well, Representative Halpin, the vote was 54-2 in the Senate, 97-8 in the House. This wasn't even close. That's right. This was a, a true bipartisan effort with uh, a team of skilled negotiators on both sides, talking in good faith, trying to get us to a point where we can provide some uh, confidence to the residents of Illinois. I want yeah. to talk about one area in particular to get started in, in regards to the budget. You're pretty happy about uh, Ask Me workers and, and workers getting back pay. I mean, that was really important to you and you like that in this budget. I, I love that piece of it. Uh, part of the budget negotiations, I think, for us in the rank and file is kind of like in municipal government. You have to go to your finance committee and say what your wishes are and what your hopes are. And that was certainly a big piece of mine. And uh, I was lucky enough to be a chief co-sponsor with uh, Mike's uh, seatmate, actually, Jerry Costello, and really did lobby uh, our side of the aisle of how important it is and what a great economic stimulus. And it's time for these people to quit being used for political back and forth between the Republicans and the Democrats. Do you think that was exactly what's been happening over the last few years is that state workers have found themselves in the middle of this budget fight? I, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, unbeknownst to them, I, there was no choice. I mean, it was just uh, something that's been going on since Quinn and it was somebody else's, it wasn't their priority. And you know, when you think about that, is it, you know, for some to say, well, is social services more important? Well, the bottom line is nobody's going to go to work for free. And basically, this was due to them, and they were working for free. And we can't expect them to work on our behalf as taxpayers for nothing. And but the, oh, go ahead. And they, and they got sidelined uh, as a result of those tight budgets. You know, every year that you know the legislature seems to say, "Well, maybe next year. Well, maybe next mm -hmm. year." This is uh, by far the longest outstanding or, or outstanding debt that the state of Illinois had. This mm -hmm. is a bill from uh, 2012 and it was just the right thing to do. We, you, when you have priorities like that, you gotta make room for it. And it's gonna be a huge economic uh, injection here in the Quad Cities. Absolutely. Did you get to a point where you were really worried about state worker morale and whether they would even show up for work at some times because it's like they yeah. have been the punching bag over the last few years? They're, yeah, they're constantly uh, accused by some of, 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 of not being the hardworking employees that they are. Uh, the reality is that they gave up a lot in entry level type uh, wages so that they'd have a little bit more job security and know that they have the dignity of working for for the people of the state of Illinois and it, it's got to be hard for them over the years to have such negative um, uh, implications thrown their way and then not get paid the what the courts have told them they should get paid well as we said the budget was approved it has been signed L let me ask you about the uh, financial world not really uh, reacting all that kindly Moody's is saying yeah that's fine we've still got huge pension problems in Illinois yeah, uh, passage of the budget should be celebrated on time. It should be celebrated, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, solve all Illinois' problems. We still have uh, a tough road ahead. We're going to have to still keep uh, uh, counting every penny and make sure that we're funding the things that are necessary, but cutting those programs or wasteful spending that isn't proving effective. 
Um, so it, there's a long road ahead, we're not done. But we are, we are I think, uh, changing that path, giving uh, Illinoisans some confidence in their government that we'll be able to do this as a routine basis now and, and start moving forward. Representative McCombie, mm -hmm. we don't catch up on a lot of bills though, is that not correct? Uh, well, Post, you know, do overdue bills. Yeah, it, it, there's a plan to. We put that in place last year. Um, also, the comptroller has the ability now to um, borrow from the treasurer, pay a three percent compared to a nine percent mm -hmm. uh, rate. So that is that's wonderful. Um, we are on a plan to pay the backlog down. We also are paying our last payment from the Quinn Air right now, and with this, uh, we do have. Uh, about 1.2 billion uh, given authority to pay back uh, bills to vendors that are due for DOC. I think like over 400 million dollars of bills that are sitting out there. She can now pay those uh, let a, with the AFSME as well, some Medicaid bills that she can now pay. Um, these are bills that we have to do business and you know another piece of the budget you know with Moody's, Mike is completely right that that is not the fix-all but it's certainly a start and there is pension reform in that. Um, and so many people have so many different numbers of what the pension uh, debt is. Mm -hmm. $130 billion is the pension debt, give or take, obviously. You know, there's some say 250 and depending on how you're figuring it, the true actual black and white number is around $130 billion, um, which is brutal. It but, is, yes. But there's been fixes. They put a, the Tier 2 in place. They are working at this year in this budget. We're making the payment. That's huge. Uh, they didn't do that last year. And we, that's another way to prove stability as well. I wanted to talk about some of the pension plans. And, and, and we were talking earlier before we started recording was about this buyout program um, that would actually save the state of Illinois quite a bit of change. Yeah, and it's the best part about it, as I mentioned earlier, it's a constitutional solution. It gives employees choice. It's not forced upon them, uh, but it has the potential of saving the state money. Uh, each uh, employee's individual circumstance is going to dictate whether or not they'll accept uh, discounted money now as opposed to waiting it over the rest of the, the course of their lifetime. Discounted money being you could get a 60% lump sum right Correct. now and you could do with it as you wish. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, um, if you're if you've got a particular plan in mind for your retirement, uh, if you've got particular needs now uh, that you may not need later on, it may be a good deal for you. And again, it's a voluntary choice and each employee gets to make that choice on their own. That seems to be the key, make it a voluntary choice, mm -hmm. that way you're not running into any constitutional issues as we've seen uh, 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 the courts strike down some of the pension reforms in the past. Absolutely. And this budget did not include the, the uh, pretend dollars from tier three of last year, which is $500 million. And uh, I'll be honest, I asked uh, the other side of the aisle, Mike's side of the aisle, is this $445 uh, million, is that a hokey number or is that real? And they, they said it's a very educated, uh, real number uh, with the voluntary, and th that's only maybe 20, 25%, so that's a pretty low number too. I mean, more could jump onto that and take advantage of that and, and use the dollars that's gonna benefit for their retirement. And this, if I could add, it's not a solely Democratic idea. The no, right. Republican members of the, the House and I think possibly the Senate have also been advocating for something like this for years. And uh, this is another area where we're able to come together. Mm -hmm. Well, is this kind of a kumbaya moment now between Democrats and Republicans that didn't exist before? I mean, it, it, are, are we looking at the bad old days of Illinois government in our rearview mirror and that this is now the new normal? I think that that spirit of cooperation on the in the, the rank and file level has always been there. Uh, there is a congeniality, uh, but obviously campaign and campaign finance laws and the, the, the millions of dollars of spending that are going to go into these races, uh, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't tell folks here in the Quad Cities to, to expect positive campaigns. The reality is this governor's race is going to be a negative uh, campaign. But as far as actually getting things done and, and doing our job in Springfield, I think that's that is still a possibility. It's something I know we're both committed to. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I mean, being in the minority party in Springfield isn't easy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think compared to the last year to this year, I mean, it's black and white. Um, but don't get me wrong, there was terrible times on the floor and there was still some very hard words said on the floor. Um, and yeah, you have to decide um, if you're going to carry those with you and hold grudges. Um, you know, I certainly wasn't happy with some of the bills that I didn't get passed and you just have to move on and, and try again next year to fight for them again and try a different way. Another area, of course, school funding, particularly for the university system in uh, Illinois, we're seeing about a 2% increase uh, in funding. Not what the universities wanted because it's still below levels from a few years ago. 
is sustainable? I mean, you've had a real concern, both of you being northern Illinois uh, lawmakers, seeing mm -hmm. people go to Iowa and Wisconsin, the flight away from Illinois schools. Well, I think with them not receiving any funding since 2014, mm -hmm. uh, they're happy with 2%. Uh, obviously, they would want more because they need more. But on top of that as well, they do have some uh, capital uh, dollars that's for their deferred exactly. maintenance, which is going to be uh, a huge bonus because there's roofs that are leaking, uh, classrooms that they can't use uh, across a lot of our universities. So that is a big benefit. The biggest thing, I think, that is also on top of that that's going to increase um, students staying in Illinois and going to Illinois schools is our promise of the four-year map. Uh, you know, not knowing if year to year that's going to be there because some students completely rely on that and when out-of-state tuition can be cheaper without that map, of course they're going to flee. Um, but this, I think, will really help them stay. That was one of the biggest drivers, I think, for, for our students going out of state. You know, when, when Iowa or Missouri was offering a scholarship or grant, uh, you know, commensurate with what the MAP grant would have offered, and it's, it's do, or, do or die, you know, I need an education. Uh, that was a big incentive for folks to leave the state. If we have that stability, we can continue to reinvest in our own students who will stay here, uh, be part of the economy, and contribute to, to our area. Staying with education a moment longer, to particularly school safety, um, with all the, uh, the incidents that we've seen. And then, once again, in Dixon we saw it as well. Scary times in the schools. Is the legislature going to be more proactive as far as what they want to see to make our schools safer? Well, I think what we've, what we've tried to do on that front is to allow schools to, to make those decisions for themselves and, fi and figure out what their specific needs are. Um, in this uh, education bill, we provide another $350 million in addition to what we provided last year for curriculum, which may free up some other money uh, within, within school districts for uh, either security or uh, school resource officers, counselors, things of that nature. But I think the, the plan that we've put forward lets each school address those issues based on their own needs. It sounded like the legislature wanted school districts to do more for mental health in regards to their students, perhaps even their staff as well. I mean, is that a key component to school safety in Illinois? Well, we, we both sit on the same um, education committee, and, and they do want that, but it all comes down to money. Right. And also... And you don't want mandates that uh, the local school districts may not be able to afford. Yes, I'm very anti the mandate. It's kind of a, 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 a thing in committee. But, um, yeah, they want those, th but there's also a shortage of folks getting into that industry as well. So mm -hmm. even if you had, you know, money to do that today, it's going to be hard to find those people to come and work. Um, yeah, Chris Welch had a bill, um, HB 2808, and uh, which would open up some abilities for uh, mental health uh, professionals to come in. Now, I did vote. Ag I voted for it, against it, and, and, and I ended up against it again because I thought it included SROs. And I actually just reached out to him this morning and said, if the governor were to veto this bill, would you be open to me suggesting to open it up to have SRO as part of that grant and process? And SROs being? The, the resource officers okay. within our schools. Because the small schools, unlike uh, Chicago or urban areas, um, may only be able to afford a part-time retired police officer. Mm -hmm. um, and, or in some places, even in Rock Island County, uh, Cordova doesn't have a police station, so they don't have an officer to share time with because the sheriff's department takes care of it. So we, to have those resources um, would be very helpful. When you heard about the Dixon shooting, I mean, you must have thought, oh my, this is too close to home. On the other hand, legislation is not often good when it's reactionary right off the bat. Are you, are you concerned that, that Illinois isn't doing enough as far as the safety of its students, or, or is it almost a, this is society, there's not only so much you can do? Well, knock on wood, I feel that all of our schools are doing very well. Uh, they have their plans in place. They're actively training. We passed another bill um, asking them to do active drills. Our schools are already doing those drills. Uh, I think we are being, being very proactive, and I think Dixon and uh, Officer Dallas was a, a, a good showing of that. And we're going to continue. I feel like, Mike, we need to stay out of their way, the schools, and they're going to come to us with what legislative needs they need. Uh, from us, and we heard that in committee. Um, we'll we'll let you know. We'll let you know what you need to do to help us protect our kids. Well, and as you know, Mercer County Schools are asking for the uh, school board associations to uh, push more for uh, allowing teachers to be armed. Is that an area that you think is going to be ultimately successful? Uh, I don't think there. It's not something that we've discussed on, mm -hmm. in Springfield. I don't think that there's a huge push for that. 
I think the the priority should be on letting schools use their resources as, as they see fit as far as putting in security measures. But as Representative McCombie concerns. pointed out, and as, as Mercer County points out uh, time and time again, the nearest police officer might be 20, 30 minutes away. Yeah, and, and, th and that's a you know, that's a situation that Mercer County, is, if, if it's something that they are really pushing for, they will contact uh, either myself, Tony, Representative Swanson, um, mm -hmm. and it, it'd be something that we certainly consider, but right now that's not uh, the prime moving force. One of the many local issues, and we were talking earlier about the uh, Savannah Sabula Bridge and the continuation mm -hmm. of uh, having problems getting traffic, not necessarily on that bridge, but you know, the approaches and all that, and, 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 and travelers having to go, what, down to Clinton and then coming back or up? Dubuque. What can you tell us on the front as far as uh, perhaps a ferry or some kind of transportation system that could solve this issue? Well, it's been devastating to the businesses on both sides of, of the river. Um, our businesses that are, are calling us and asking us to, to push uh, Iowa dot to get going on this is uh, they're down about 35, 40 percent right. in some cases. If some businesses are closing or staying open part time. Uh, yesterday there was a meeting in Savannah and our office went and they are hoping that a ferry will be coming um, next week and a bus service next week. Um, Iowa was very quick to uh, apologize for the lack of communication because that's really been the hard thing and I think the public is often okay uh, hearing bad news as long as they're hearing the news. Mm -hmm. You can't be just left in the dark constantly on these kind of issues or any issues for that matter. Plus so. light at the end of the tunnel would be nice too so oh, that you yeah. know how long you have to wait. And we're entering a very important tourism season for Sabula and Savannah. We are and I don't think it's going to be open until uh, the first or second week of September. Been talking about uh, sports gaming as well, uh, protects, mm -hmm. uh, 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 gambling as far as uh, sports teams are concerned. Is that something that Illinois should get uh, deeply involved? I, I noticed yeah, that the, the latest uh, slot machine, the ga latest gambling expansion did fail. Is this an area that may succeed? Yeah, I think there is. There's, there's a good push for it. Um, I think there is a market for it in Illinois. I think if we do it, it'd have to be done right by uh, you know, pr trying to protect ourselves from some of the negative uh, consequences making sure that uh, any money that the state receives from it is actually put to good use and put put towards you know pension payments or education someplace that we're actually going to get a return on that investment um, but, but it's isn't that always kind of the promise whenever there's yeah. a gambling expansion is that oh it'll yeah. go to schools and things will be better yeah and that's why I'm very cautious about uh, being supportive of it because uh, although I think it's something in theory I could get behind uh, the legislature hasn't had a good track record, but I mean, I like to think now that I'm there and <laughs> I'm going to try <laughs> to work on change, this. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what we're going to be working for. And I will say, you know, since uh, since the two of us have been down there, we've had two budgets as opposed to the three years prior. So there must be must be something going right. <laughs> legislature also was taking a look at expanding a medical marijuana mm -hmm. and perhaps even to use it to help combat opioid mm -hmm. abuse. How, how did you support that? Uh, I I was a yes, Kelly Cast, and that did pass overwhelmingly, mm -hmm. surprisingly. Um, I, I really feel with a doctor's prescription uh, and a doctor's support that if that is something that can decrease that and lower the deaths, um, we're on the right track. Uh, Are I we really finding that the medical marijuana use is now more mainstream? It's, it seems to be more accepted because it seems it's, it's, it's baby steps. You allow it for a couple things and then it slowly expands. You know, actually in Illinois, from my understanding, it's not very open. Uh, there, is, there is a problem with the medical marijuana, getting um, whatever the ailment is, getting those accepted and on the list. Now, I do trust uh, our medical profession, and if that is something that is going to help people, uh, they're the professionals, and they should be able to, to prescribe that as needed. That's how I feel. Uh, now, ask me recreational, and that's a whole different ballgame, um, because I think it's just that's a, a whole different story. But I, I think this will be a great start to um, ending all of the deaths that we have um, because of that crisis. And it is a crisis that we're seeing in small communities and mm -hmm. rural areas as well. I mean, the opioid crisis is from border to border. Yeah, it, it doesn't know uh, really any income level or, or geography. Um, it, it's, it, and it comes from a variety of sources. I mean, it's just as simple as having a surgery where you're maybe overprescribed uh, opioids in the first place, and then you, you know where do you, where do you turn? Um, so this there are, there are very 
very good methods. I know Sheriff Bustos here in Rock Island County uh, has spearheaded efforts to, to reduce those deaths. To, we passed a bill to uh, improve the prescription monitoring program. Um, we, I, think, I think everyone understands how important an issue it is and we are all rowing in the same direction. Legislature also approved the ERA after uh, Illinois was pretty much the state that, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much the state that killed the ERA way back in the 1970s. Was this symbolic or was there more to it? Uh, it, w it was certainly symbolic, but I wouldn't say it was only symbolic. Uh, it was a long time coming. I think uh, from the supporters that I heard from, both here in the district and throughout the state of Illinois, uh, it is incredibly important for, for a lot of women to know that the rights that they are aware of, that they know they have, uh, are, are, are included in the Constitution. Uh, it's one thing to recognize that you have certain rights, but when uh, government and business over time has failed to respect those rights, it's important to women uh, and, and men that support them to make sure it's enshrined in the Constitution. And yet you voted against it. I did, I did. You know, there was a, this has been a bill that's been going on for years and years and years. And there's a question with us even passing this, if this is going to, the deadline has passed decades ago. Um, some say, well, it was only nine words. It doesn't mean anything. It's not going to make anything better. And then my question is, then why are we talking about it the day before we're leaving? Uh, so I do believe there was some political push on that as well, and, and putting some in a, a you know a, a catch place. And it was there was women on both the Republican and the Democrat side that did not uh, vote for that. I feel one of the things for me is, is I'm not willing to uh, vote on something that's going to have unintended consequences that could possibly take away some of our rights. I feel there's protections in place for us now with the seventh. Um, um, the Title VII and the 14th Amendment, and I certainly would never want to do anything that's going to take anything like that away. I also feel I was raised by very strong women, and I feel very equal, and even the advocates that came into my office that were for it um, had opinions on whether or not I should vote for it. it, gave me reasons to, but also gave me reasons not to, and I have to listen to both sides. The 100th session of the Illinois General Assembly is now in the books. What, what grade do you give the lawmakers this time around? Oh, well, um, I would say we would at least be getting a B. I think a B would be good. Last year you would have given yourselves? Um, uh, as a whole or yeah. myself? <laughs> as a whole. Yeah, as a whole. Uh, I have a D. A D, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, what do you give this session? I, I think B, B is about right for this session. I think we did, we did do a lot of good things. We moved the ball forward. We've, we've stopped a lot of the, uh, the bleeding, so to speak, with, with budget issues school funding. There are a lot of a lot of things that are now in the rearview mirror that provide a solid base for us to continue to work. We've given ourselves a little bit of uh, breathing room on the financial uh, aspects of it. Again, inspiring confidence in business and individuals, giving them um, the ability to reinvest in the community and hopefully snowball that effect. Illinois State Representative Mike Halpin, mm -hmm. Democrat from Rock Island. Representative Tony McCombie, Republican from Savannah, thank you both for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Well, summer is almost upon us, and that opens the doors to great outdoor events throughout our area. And Laura Adams joins us with some options you can consider if you head out and about. This is Out and About for June 4th through 10th. Hi, I'm Laura Adams. Don't miss Quad Cities Museum Week June 9th through 17th with a variety of specials or catch the spirit of the quarter in downtown Rock Island for gumbo yaya, Cajun music and spiced food heat up your taste buds. It's the Quad City's biggest and best rummage sale, the second fiddle sale supporting Quad City Symphony Orchestra. The Big Run welcomes runners of all ages and levels at Crow Creek Park on June 6th or celebrate RME's 14th anniversary at their block party on June 8th beginning at 4.30. Bishop Hill hosts an honor flight benefit in Village Park June 10th as well as showcasing a World War I exhibition in the Steeple Building through October 31st. The Davenport Library invites you to meet Birds of Prey at the Eastern Avenue branch June 6th at 2 p.m., while the QC Theater Workshop goes wild with the hilarious musical comedy Reefer Madness through the 17th. The glorious music of the Bridges of Madison County continues on stage at Circa 21, and welcome Maine Dennis, a bohemian eccentric living in Depression era New York City in the musical Maine at Quad City Music Guild. Ballet Quad Cities present Ballet Under the Stars at the Lincoln Park Theater in Rock Island June 8th through 10th. And the Southern Fried Comedy Dearly Beloved finishes its run at Richmond Hills Barn Theater in Geneseo on the 10th. For more information, visit WQPT.org. 
Thank you, Laura. Kevin Carton is the front man for the pop rock group called Minus Six, but we caught up with him when he took the stage alone for performing for us at Moline's Black Box Theater. That's where he played for us an original composition he calls No Name. My slow brain it lacks features. I blame it on my teachers. Your warm embrace, not face, suggest I know your name. How to say sweetly, I don't. It's gone completely, but it's not like I don't care. Perhaps you got some sun, maybe change your hair. No, oh, please don't take offense to my lack of competence to recall names. I've never been good in names. Try to help another when a brother's in need Though I've heart that don't mean my left brain's smart I just smile and nod when numbers come into play For that arithmetic always goes down like arsenic Now it's not that I don't try It's only there's one thing and I can't quantify Oh, how many math tests I failed Many more than I prevailed Don't have me count, I've never been good at math What's your name? Don't have me help with your math. Kevin Carton and No Name. WQPT is doing its part to support the military men and women in the cities who are serving our nation. We call it Embracing the Military, and it will be a birthday celebration this month on the Rock Island Arsenal. The Quad Cities Chamber, the Army, and the Arsenal will hold the 243rd annual birthday ball that will include the Undersecretary of the Army, Patrick Murphy, as the keynote speaker. It is coming up June 15th at the Waterfront Convention Center in Bettendorf. WQPT is proud to be the media sponsor for this year's event. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues of the cities. Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by the Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years.